Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I wanted to show off this solar panel setup that I have going on here. So the first thing uh, you'll notice is this the top right of my world here. <clears throat> and uh, I have a very large layer of bunker tiles followed by uh, some bunker doors and then a series of mechanized airlocks that aren't plugged in. A few panes of glass here, and then all the way down here are the actual solar panels. So I've dug this way because uh, I wanted to put these solar panels in a cold biome, which was right here. Uh, but as you can tell, the uh, regolith has already, you know, taken over the heat of that biome and slowly made its way down here. But with a few wheeze warts, these things are actually able to uh, sustain a pretty modest temperature. So one of the biggest pain points of setting up a solar farm is that when Regolith hits this top layer, it actually blocks the light from coming down on your farm and you have to continually send duplicates up here to uh, dig out the the dirt that's caused. So there's this exploit here where if Regolith or sand or anything falls into a door and then the door is closed and then opened, the Regolith is basically destroyed. And so I'm going to take you through the automation of this right now. Luckily, we're in the middle of a meteor shower here. My meteor scanner down here has turned on, which has set everything here. Uh, it triggered this AND gate uh, to basically turn red. This AND gate's connected to a manual shutoff all the way back at the base, uh, just in case I need to close it for construction purposes. So the doors are closed and one nice feature about this is the doors close right away, the automated uh, airlocks close right away just in case the meteor shower is a little bit early. It doesn't smash into my glass, it'll actually smash into the airlocks instead. So. I've had a few instances where a few of these meteors have snuck through and hit the airlocks instead of destroying the glass. That's one very nice benefit of this setup. But uh, then I have a few other pieces of automation here that we'll take a look at uh, as um, the meteor shower comes to a halt. Exactly what's going to happen is this meteor scanner will turn off, which will turn on this uh, main wire here. Then I have a uh, knock gate set up here that currently is stopping this clock, this binary uh, repeater clock, uh, from running. And so what this repeater is meant to do is basically this is the heartbeat for opening and closing these doors uh, once the meteor shower is over. However, you'll notice that there's also an AND gate right here, and that is because uh, we want to only open those doors after 60 some seconds have occurred, because that's about how long it takes for this stuff to these doors to open and the regolith to fall in. So right now the regolith has fallen in, this clock is happening, the clock turns on, the regolith falls in, the clock is going to turn off here, the regolith is destroyed, and then eventually I have this uh, nice little active timer here, this uh, buffer, or this is a filter gate, excuse me, that after 145 seconds, it locks these doors into the on position. 
so light can pass through clean. So I think this is a pretty big, uh, I think like, I would consider this an exploit, but I think that for now it's appropriate to use this because there's no way to automate the removal of the regolith, which I think is a kind of a pain. And so this setup uh, has gone through many iterations. If you're gonna set this up by yourself, uh, what I suggest you do is definitely have eight doors. Uh, nine is okay as well. I mean, you can go as high as you want, but um, anything less than eight uh, is not guaranteed uh, to last very long. Because what happens is if you have uh, eight doors, for instance, and nine regolith have piled up, the ninth one will be sticking out uh, right here once the doors close. And when they close, they immediately destroy Regolith. And this one, this ninth one, will drop down and actually destroy a door as it's dropping down. It's kind of a, a glitchy situation here. But basically, it, it destroys the door as it's, uh, as it's dropping. So I suggest putting four spaces between your door and your bunker tiles and having at least eight doors, eight sets of doors set up here. And I found that uh, in uh, groups of six, you can have uh, a Weezwort solar panel, Weezwort solar panel offset perfectly under the light. And that seems to work pretty well for cooling purposes as well. So I'm going to let this uh, run one more time here. Again, this will turn on, triggering this NOT gate to allow this clock to be run. Okay. These uh, buffers are on a 30 second timer, and this is on a 61 second timer. That's Those times are set uh, so that right at the 60 second marker this thing will turn on allowing the doors to open uh, the airlocks to open so this uh, clock is going it's been through the 30 second cycle it's going through its second 30 second cycle So now we have uh, this second clock cycle has occurred. Third and now the fourth clock cycle is happening. It's gonna open the doors back up and uh, then it's gonna cycle off again, but not before this uh, filter gate actually locks it into place with an OR gate. So if you want the timings for all these, uh, this is uh, 30 seconds for each of these buffers and a NOT gate here. Um, a filter gate at 61 seconds, a filter gate at 145, AND gate, OR gate, and then uh, this just, uh, you don't have to have this AND gate here, or and this I had this OR gate here uh, as a clock. Originally I had this uh, system shutting off at nighttime, but I realized it was just a, a waste of power to close these doors if you don't need to. So uh, the meteor scanner does its job perfectly. Connect the meteor scanner up with a knock gate here uh, by itself and, and you'll be perfectly fine. Or no, uh, just a, yeah, a knock gate. That's correct. And that's basically it. If you have any questions, Feel free to leave a comment below. I'll try to answer them. Thanks for watching.